you know what CFLs are? No, I, I don't have an idea what it is. Have, uh, have you ever heard of compact fluorescent lights? No. What, what does that mean, CFL? You know, buying a light bulb used to be a simple thing. You go to the store, pick up a bulb, screw it in, and that was it. Chances are you've heard about compact fluorescent lights, or CFLs. These bulbs, often spiral-shaped, are not only supposed to save you energy, but over time to save you money. It never lasts as long as they say. People have shied away from CFLs because the perception is they don't work all that well and that they might even be dangerous. See why there could be a light bulb danger in your home. Because this new product could be hazardous to your health. <laughs> in this lighting lab in Troy, New York, engineers put CFLs to the test, measuring their light output with sophisticated and sometimes homegrown technologies like the... Fluxometer. Flux is how much light is coming out of the source. By most accounts, this work has paid off. As we're actually checking the performance of uh, lamps that are readily available on the market. Okay, so CFLs are much better than they were just a few years ago. But with many consumers still complaining about everything from the light quality and the startup time to the mercury content, are the bulbs really ready for prime time? We wanted to find out. In this Home Depot, there's an entire section dedicated to CFLs. There's different colors, there's different sizes, there's different wattages. Uh, what you need when you're shopping for a CFL is your own personal consumer expert. And it appears we have one. This is Bob Markovich of uh, Consumer Reports Magazine. How are you doing, Bob? Good to meet you, Tom. Thanks for showing up. Let's say I want to replace a 60-watt incandescent bulb in a table lamp. Look for a CFL with the equivalent wattage. So in this case, it's, a, it's the equivalent of a 60-watt uh, incandescent bulb, which means it's producing light roughly equivalent to what you'd get in a 60-watt incandescent, even though, in fact, it's using only 14 watts. Uh -huh. So that's where you're saving energy. You're saving a lot of energy that way because these use roughly 75% less of it. But the color is going to be awful, isn't it, Bob? It really shouldn't be, no. They've made huge steps. In fact, this one, and most of them are labeling it these days, it says soft white. And that will be a much yellower, softer color that people are really used to in incandescence. So how do I know it's always going to say soft white on there It for usually me? does. There's a simple, foolproof way to tell okay. what you're getting. And that is to check what's known as the K number or Kelvin number. If you see 2700 to 3000 K, it's going to be a soft white color. Anything from 3500 K to 6500 is more of a white light. In fact, it even gets bluer as you move up that number. It'd be nice if we could actually see these things lit up somewhere. As it happens, we can. We're looking at an arrangement ranging from the soft white uh, on on to a cooler white, which is intermediate, uh, and all the way up to daylight, which you'll see is the bluest of these three. Consumers still complain a fair amount about the fact that they're not dimmable, that CFLs don't last as long as they're advertised, mm -hmm. that they take a long time to start up. Well, while CFL's still aren't perfect, you still have to make a little bit of a sacrifice. They've come a long way, and many of the old complaints really don't hold anymore. Even the least of them lasted at least 3,000 hours, and we have several that are burning well after 10,000 hours. You hear a lot about mercury. It's dangerous. These contain mercury. If you drop it, you break it. Is, is this an issue? Obviously, any mercury is a concern, but you're looking at a fraction of what's in an old-fashioned mercury thermometer, a fever thermometer. And not only that, uh, Energy Star rated CFLs, which is what most of them are these days, are limited to no more than five milligrams, and in fact, some bulbs now have three milligrams or less. Uh, obviously, if they break, what you there, there are a whole bunch of guidelines on the EPA's website, www.epa.gov. It's a series of things. You'd open the windows, get the people out of the room, uh, and basically take, up, take the broken glass, and put it into a, um, a bag, you double bag it, and that you can throw away as long as you double bag it. But you don't have to put a hazmat suit on. So what do you do with the bulbs when they're burned out? Mm -hmm. Burned out but unbroken. The good news is that more and more stores will take them. Uh, you essentially bring them to the store and dump them into a bin. Are there places where you wouldn't use a CFL bulb? Because of that run-up time, the 20 to 30 seconds typical, say, for a floor or table lamp, you probably don't want to use them in a, a staircase or an emergency exit. You also don't want to use them in a closet or other places where the light won't be on for at least 15 minutes. Uh, because, again, constant cycling will tend to reduce their life. 
although that too is improving and we're testing that right now. Clearly CFLs have come a long way since the early days, but is anybody buying them? Uh, I've got 12 downstairs and two outside. Oh man, I got the whole house. I use all the time now on my house. A recent report says that the market penetration for CFLs is now at about 25%. The reality is most of us are going to have to get used to the bulbs because federal legislation will effectively turn out the lights on incandescents beginning in 2012.